My favorite way to do anything in town is just walk around until. <laughs> when I discovered that phenomenon, I was just moved here and I said, wow, catch a can's in proportion to your intentions. Oh, yeah. Like you can run right into the person you need that day because it kept happening. Yep. And I'd come home and tell Nora, I can't believe it. I walked around the corner and there they were. Yeah. It's just opportunity yeah. and. It's the right proportion for those things to happen. Yep. When did you get to catch a can? 83. Yeah. I came with the 83 arrival of uh, Paul Anderson, um, Greg Poppin, Ray Troll, and me. We all arrived in 83. <laughs> Were you painting through that time? Oh yeah, I was, I've always been painting. And I, and I saw this town had all this art, you know? I really noticed it, not only like native art, but all these uh, galleries, like this little town had all these galleries and a lot of good artists, watercolor artists and stuff. And I, I saw Terry's work right away, Terry Paul's work. And then uh, Ray had done that map of Ketchikan right around then. And uh, I was going, wow, there's a whole bunch of people here that are you know, doing art. I really think I could do it. I remember telling Nora, I said, I want to, I want to start doing art like professionally. So I'd always painted, but I was mostly playing music, and I kept playing music, and I still am, you know? And that's really like the only uh, regular job I have. But, uh, but um, yeah, and I just started painting, like seriously, and trying to sell them, and that's what I've been doing. What has always been painting mean? Oh, well, I've always been coloring, my mom was a school teacher, so I always had crayons and paper. And then at 12, I started oil painting. I'd always been watercolor painting, because that was easy. And I started oil painting, and I've been oil painting since 12. And I grew up, you know, in the suburb, uh, born in the Bronx, but then we moved to a suburb when I was eight. But it was a short ride to the city, and then by the time I was a senior, I could not see sitting in school, wasting my time when the Metropolitan Museum of Art was right there. So I skipped every Friday for a while, went down to the museum and walked down Fifth Avenue to the Frick Collection, which is this other incredible collection. And then used to go down to the Grand Central and take the train home, spend the weekend totally energized by what I had seen. And I would start taking off Mondays, stay home and paint when no one was home, making believe I, that was my life, which is, it's now become, where I'm just in my house painting, you know? And I stop and watch TV or cook something the whole time. And now it's the life I'm living. So I was heading in the right direction, but they finally called my dad in after 15 absences. <laughs> that was funny. I think he sympathized with me. Really. Do you remember what it was like getting like your first commission in Ketchikan? Or? The first painting, well, first painting I sold, Karen Pitcher bought it. And it was from the Harris Street Bridge, looking up the creek on a watercolor that I did from right there and she bought it. And then the second major one was the painting of the tunnel. And Hall had put that on the cover of the scene. He took a picture and he put it on. Tell me what the scene is. The art insert that the, the, that the paper used to have. And it was just an art section every Sunday. It was called the scene. And Hall was in charge of taking pictures for that. And he put that on the cover one. And it really helped me. It really, really, really helped me. Billy Joe, who's the manager of the store here at the uh, Discovery Center, and Hazel, who's the director for the forest, one of the directors for the Forest Service, they both agreed that it would be nice, and Billy Joe t asked me if I'd like to do a painting of Elizabeth Paradovich. And I said, that but would hang here, and I said, I would love to do that. So I, I looked through all the pictures, and I figured, wow, I'd like to do her as a young girl. Not as, because you always see the same pictures of her as an adult. So you, right here on the display is a picture of her with her parents when she's between 14 and 17, I'm not sure. And uh, so that's what I've done. And Jeremy said that I could be the artist in residence here at the Discovery Center. So I've been, I've been painting here all summer long.
would like to start off and say welcome to the Discovery Center on behalf of the Southeast Alaska Discovery Center, the Forest Service, and the Cape Fox uh, Cultural Foundation. Thanks everyone for showing up. We're going to get this thing going. We're not going to hold you up too long. Uh, I just want to say real quick, I kept an eye on Dave all summer. Make sure he did a good job. So <laughs> I just want everybody to know that. I'm going to step aside and let Mr. Dave Rubin come up and say a few words. Then we'll get the presentation going. And I'll, I'll be up there. All right? So Dave, come on up. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Uh, I think we should unveil it, and then maybe I can talk about it, instead of talking about something you have no idea. <laughs> so, where's Kai? There he is. Okay. Did you get a drum roll? Oh, yeah. <laughs> giving me what I've been telling people all summer, one of the best summers I've ever had. I've never gone in and clocked in at a job, or it was my job, to go in and sit down and paint. <laughs> <laughs> it was amazing. Billy Joe said, why don't you paint a painting of Elizabeth Peroni so you can have something to do when you don't have to it? And I think it was, I think it was Billy Joe and Hazel who came up with that idea, so I started to get getting to know Elizabeth, because her story's right here. And I didn't want to do the same pictures they have of her, so I, I chose a picture of her when she's a young girl standing with her adoptive parents, the Wanamakers, and you can see the whole story here. But people would, I realized what my real mission was, because people would come over and say, oh, who are you painting? They go, oh, this is Elizabeth Brodovich, she's a young girl. And if you don't know about her, you should go over there and read. And I sent everybody over there, and I came over a few times a day and would read it. And I actually have it memorized. <laughs> she was just sitting there. She's part of the Alaska Native System, but she went to attend this meeting of the Senate because they were debating whether to pass this anti-discrimination law. And she was sitting there weaving. And then one of the gentlemen said, and who are these people barely out of savagery? They want to associate with us, people with 5,000 years of civilization behind them. And she said, that's it. She put down her weaving. She got up. She said, I never would have expected that I, when barely out of savagery, would have to remind these gentlemen with 5,000 years of civilization behind them of our Bill of Rights. And you can read there, it said her words just rolled like thunder through that room. And everybody was silent. And there were just some whispers. And the next day they voted on it, 11 to 4. And the first anti-discrimination bill, civil rights bill in America, was passed by Elizabeth Paradovich, who graduated from K High, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Which is why Deer Mountain's here. <clears throat> this is actually a coat and bike model and I have this village scene, and then I have what might be a young girl's imagination of the capital, like way off in the distance, up on some mountaintop, unattainable, unreachable. And these were the two worlds that she was going to, destined to resolve, you know? And of course, Deer Mountain, because she graduated from Kehai, which I was so excited about when I found that out. But uh, I want to thank everybody for coming. Jeremy, I still want to paint you. you know? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for you guys' direction. I, thank you to Nathan for coming. Mm -hmm. And uh, everybody else. So I don't know. That's it. I'm just <laughs> <laughs> The Cape Fox Foundation dancers will be performing for us here momentarily. Thank you. All right.
your knees just a little bit, and go back and forth to be able to drop. Here you guys, just two, three seconds. <laughs> Take part and clap your hands to the beat of the drum. <laughs> <laughs>